Hi there, my name's Johnny. I'm from the Student Wellbeing Team and welcome to another one of our, our short workshops. Uh, this time we'll be focusing on sleep. Um, these are brief workshops just aimed at giving you some initial information with the hope that you can kind of go off, maybe find out a little bit more um, that might help kind of your situation. And remember, if you do need to speak to anyone, then don't hesitate to visit the Student Wellbeing website and self-refer in order to kind of speak to one of our practitioners. So let's think a bit about sleep. Sleep is so important in terms of looking after our general well-being and um, ensuring that we get kind of enough sleep to help us kind of function to recharge. As human beings, we all need sleep and um, this can differ in terms of how much time, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. But what's going on with in regards to kind of sleep? There are a whole load of kind of um, kind of chemicals within the brain that kind of help in terms of our sleep kind of patterns and we go through kind of um, patterns kind of throughout the day when we are kind of functioning and kind of doing OK. There's periods in life where sometimes our body isn't quite working as it could or should do. And there's things that we can do to try to reset this and make it a little bit better. But let's have a bit of a think about it. So generally speaking, I guess kind of when 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 the sun comes up, um, the, the, there, is, there is a release of serotonin within the body, which kind of stimulates ourselves to um, begin awakening as such as well. Um, we then go about our day and as kind of the sun goes down, uh, we often then see uh, melatonin release. Melatonin is kind of the sleep hormone as such as well. Um, often sometimes prescribed kind of by GPs in order to kind of boost our melatonin levels to help with the onset of sleep. Um, melatonin will kind of cause us just to feel a bit drowsy as we get into the evening. Of course, kind of we can almost bypass this. So things like caffeine don't help. It will keep us awake. Um, or if we're, we've got things to do at times, kind of that will keep us stimulated, such as if you're um, studying late into the night, if you're keeping yourself stimulated, you'll bypass this melatonin release and you may then find it hard to get to sleep. So it can be really helpful at times to kind of keep a regular kind of pattern going to bed kind of 9, 10, 11 a.m., 11 p.m. Sorry, at the latest there uh, in order to kind of be able to, to help um, get to sleep quicker and easier. And by doing the same thing most nights just allows kind of that melatonin to kind of get into a cycle that can be helpful for us. But how much do you need? It can really depend on how old you are. Most of you watching this video will be, to be between the ages of 18 and 25. Some of you will be more mature students um, and um, you've got the information there. But roughly speaking, we're talking about seven to nine hours a night with eight as an average of such. As mentioned, some people function kind of OK with less. Um, some people kind of need kind of much more. Uh, Winston Churchill used to only have a few hours of sleep each night, apparently. But this is also a gentleman that did struggle with kind of symptoms of depression as well. So there is that link between kind of poor sleep and at times kind of conditions such as depression and anxiety. Our brain is um, it's it's a muscle uh, in a way it needs rest. Um, just as you do if you're kind of training kind of other muscle groups as such. Sorry, it's not a muscle as such, but that's yeah, using that as an analogy um, just to kind of think about giving it rest, allowing it to recover. And that's what sleep does. But sleep offers so much more kind of the term beauty sleep is often mentioned. And there's some truth in that it allows kind of different um, and cells within the body kind of to repair and grow to keep us kind of looking fresh and keep us feeling OK as well. So there's a number of different stages of sleep. Um, it's not just as simple as awake and sleep. There are kind of these other stages that we kind of go through. I guess all you need to know really though is that we go through kind of different levels in terms of how light or heavy our sleep is as we kind of um, start to settle. Uh, we go through sleep cycles and each sleep cycle lasts for roughly 90 minutes or so. So what that means is that we'll go through kind of stage one, two, three, four, five before coming back round and kind of finding some awakening as well. Some people do wake up with each cycle. Some people just kind of might um, 
uh, I guess, um, stir a little bit more as well um, in their sleep and may inadvertently wake themselves. In fact, the next slide just kind of shows kind of that those sleep cycles as well. Um, it, it's useful to kind of be getting into kind of those deeper sleep cycles. That's kind of where kind of our rest really kind of fully happens. Um, and this this happen I get well, as those sleep cycles go on, we spend less and less kind of time in those deeper stages of sleep. Um, and as we get into the morning, our sleep is often quite light sleep, meaning it can be quite easily disturbed. Um, shift workers, so people that work night shifts, um, I guess they're going against kind of a lot of the body's natural instincts, which makes it quite challenging. Um, and in, in those cases, it's so important to kind of just try to kind of get the rest when you can as such as well um, and how you can. Um, I guess they're, they're almost kind of living on a, a different kind of sleep cycle at points. So what can kind of offset our sleep cycles? Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, things like caffeine can offset, offset it. Um, caffeine has a half-life of eight hours. What that means is that eight hours after having some caffeine, you still have half of the initial kind of amounts in your body. So if you're still having caffeine at around kind of 4 p.m., by 12 midnight, you still have half the amount of caffeine within your system. That might kind of play a part in keeping you awake. Um, a general rule of thumb that a lot of people go by is, is trying to kind of reduce or kind of not have any caffeine within the afternoon periods, but use it in the mornings to help stimulate them if that's their choices. Stress, anxiety and depression, mental health can impact on our sleep. Um, having difficulties with our thought processes can kind of leave us kind of overthinking situations that in itself can be quite stimulating and kind of impact heavily on our sleep as well. Side effects of medication can sometimes cause sleep disturbances. Um, I take, for example, kind of um, cold and flu tablets at times, even them can even they can sometimes either kind of cause us to be drowsy during the day or at times might have caffeine in it, which makes us kind of stimulated at night. So just do be aware of that. People that experience kind of regular poor sleep cycles and um, poor sleep patterns as such as well will struggle with their sleep. Um, it just knocks a circadian rhythm, their kind of sleep kind of rhythms kind of off and, and makes it really difficult to get to and stay asleep as well. So when we're thinking about some top tips, as already mentioned, trying to go to bed at a similar time each evening, reduce your caffeine and sugar intake. Avoid a large meal too close to bedtime, but also make sure you're not going to bed hungry. Supper can be really kind of useful at just making sure it tides over. So having something light at supper, such as a piece of toast or a crumpet, just to kind of yeah see us through or a bit of cereal. Exercise can be really useful, but be aware of kind of exercising too close to bed. Essentially, when exercising, you're really kind of getting your heart rate up and it can take a good few hours for this to settle. If you're going to bed with quite an elevated heart rate at times as a result of exercise, it might make it difficult to kind of get comfortable and kind of get to sleep. It's so important then just to have some relaxation and wind down time in advance of bed, even if you're kind of um, studying late into the night, just try to kind of give yourselves kind of a good kind of hour whereby you kind of put close your computer kind of or kind of devices and just try and kind of do things that help you just chill out a little bit, help your brain start to kind of wind down and settle, bringing on kind of sleep where possible as well. Consider your environment. Is it too warm? Is it too cold? Is it comfy enough? Um, is it kind of too light? Is it too dark? Well, it's not often too dark, but kind of just to consider the environment you're in. Is it too noisy? Um, is there things that you can do just to kind of reduce, re relieve that kind of using the earplugs at points and times um, to kind of go from there? Um, avoid screen time close to and during kind of our bedtime hours. Ideally, kind of keeping devices out of the bedroom um, or kind of away from your arm's reach as such as well. So the temptation isn't there to kind of go and have a look at it, kind of using do not disturb kind of functions and modes so that you're not going to get pings through the night, which might be far too tempting to check it out. And um, do use your phones at times can be really helpful. And there's a lot of kind of tools and apps that are built into them to allow 
hours to kind of help with sleep. So if you, I know I use an iPhone and there's like a, um, a, a within the alarm sections, you can kind of set up kind of your kind of uh, proposed kind of sleep times. What that does is kind of 45 minutes before bed, it just kind of gives you the little kind of alert or nudge that actually now you might want to start settling for bed. And as humans, sometimes we need nudges here and there, here and there just to kind of direct us towards kind of getting that sleep that we might need. It might be if you are kind of um, experiencing um, distress, depression or anxiety, consider what you need to do to manage some of that stress. Sometimes kind of go into bed with loads of problems on our mind or not kind of having time to address some of our problems during the day. You don't have the same distractions when your head hits the pillow. So take time to keep a diary or talk to others to try to process some of your thoughts and feelings in order to kind of be able to kind of get to, uh, to, get to sleep. At points, so you might be kept awake by repetitive thoughts. It's OK sometimes to get those thoughts out of your head and onto paper. By doing that, sometimes um, sometimes when you're trying to kind of get to sleep, you'll maybe um, have a thought on your mind and you'll be worried about forgetting that in the morning and you, you'll just be tossing and turning. Get it out, get it onto paper, then it'd come back to it in the morning. At times, our emotions can be heightened at night. So at points, maybe some of the worries that we're expressing at having, if we get that onto paper, we might wake up in the morning, look at it and be able to identify it's not as big a deal as we maybe thought it was in the night there as well, of course. Um, besides that as well, there's other things that we can kind of take. People use white noise, people use kind of sleepy tea um, that uses all kind of natural ingredients just to help with the onset of sleep as well um so do you do, do kind of use kind of resources out there um, there's a really lovely website called the sleepcouncil.org.uk um check that out um it's got some really kind of uh, useful material and information in fact it's now the sleep charity they've just rebranded so sleep charity if you google that you'll find their website if all else fails, um, continue with the advice that I've just mentioned, persevere with it, but maybe try 15 minutes of trying to sleep. If you're not successful, try some light distractions, such as some gentle music, some books um, that just help you kind of get out of your head, I guess, relaxation or breathing strategies for 15 minutes, then continue that cycle. So 15 minutes of trying to sleep, Often kind of by doing this cycle, you might find that kind of within a couple of rounds of it, you'll get to sleep. But do be aware that it does come to a stage where actually if you're not kind of quite getting there. So after four times, which is two hours of that cycle, um, it might just be more important just to try to persevere with trying to get to sleep anyway. Um, if you're really struggling, get up change the environment for 30 to 40 minutes and then trying to return for sleep. Still keep the keep the activities that you do quite light and um, don't do too much. It might be that you just need to go and get a drink of water or something um, or kind of it might be just kind of changing. Yeah, going to, um, to, to just getting up for a minute or changing kind of what you're doing just in that short space of time. If you are still struggling, speak to a GP or other professionals such as for the student wellbeing team. We'd be happy to listen to some of the problems that you're facing and kind of give some advice where we can. Cool. So again, to find out more about our team, use a QR code there. We've got the student-wellbeing at staffs.ac.uk email address. Um, and yeah, you can find out more on our website. Feedback on these workshops is always always appreciated. So if you use this other QR code, it will bring bring you to a Google Forms, or sorry, a Microsoft Forms, where you can give some feedback. Um, and thank you very much for listening to this session. Look out for more. Thanks.